So what's going on guys, Kate's here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 best and most fun builds in Diablo 4 Season 0. So at the start I will explain each class skill rotation. Then we will look into the best skills, what paragon setup should you use, what gems and gear should you equip so you would get the highest damage possible and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So first of all for your skills we want to use the Bone Spear, Bone Storm, Corpse Explosion, Corpse Tendrils, Bone Prison and Blood Mist. And as for your gear we already discussed what stats to look out for. But if you're looking for purely best of the best then here it is. So we want to get the Deathless Visage Helmet. And suck it in the Ruby Gem. Then for the Chest Armor get the Bone Wave Armor of the Disobedience. And suck it in 2 more Ruby Gems. Then for gloves we go with the bone wave gauntlets of the grasping veins. Then for the pants get the tamara tree. And suck it in 2 more ruby gems. Then for boots get the penitent greaves. Then for the amulet go with the melted heart of the selig. Then for the first ring get the ring of the umbral. And then for the second one get the band of the exposed flesh. And finally for your weapon we only want to get the splintering two handed sword. And then for your specialization upgrades. Select the Skeletal Warriors category and upgrade Skirmishes to Sacrifice. Then for the Skeletal Mages, select the Cold and upgrade till Sacrifice. And finally in Golems category, select Iron and upgrade Sacrifice. Then with that said, let's move forwards and this is how your skill tree will look like. And if you need more time to copy all of this, then check out the build link in the description. If you just came from the leveling build, then this is very similar. So again, just copy these exact upgrades. And don't forget that by gathering all the renown in the game, you will get 10 extra skill points. And then finally, we have the Paragon system. At first, it may seem overwhelming, but if you're like me, who's played all the previous Diablo games, then this is quite self-explanatory. So starting off, this is how your first 26 points should be spent. So we use the starting board and for our glyph, select the Blood Drinker. Then afterwards, this is how it should look like at around 62 points. So we select the bone grabbed board and put in the sacrificial glyph. Then this is how it should look like at around 120 points. So we select the scent of the dead board and put in the essence glyph. And then lastly, this is our final goal at around 200 points. So we select the flesh eater board and put in the control. So then in my final summary. The Penitent Greaves is the Necromancer's most important item because it gives us incredible movement speed and it will help us solve the essence problem by triggering the resource aspect of the Umbral so this is very important to get as early as possible. Then as for your gameplay loop, zoning enemies out is very important because this build doesn't have almost any movement skills so keep using the Bone Prison and Corpse Tendrils because these skills will keep enemies locked up and stunned. And then finally, the best skill rotation is to use the Bone Spear on at least one enemy to create a corpse, then activate Corpse Tendrils and then use the Bone Prison to group up and lock enemies. Then from here spam the Bone Spear, then again Corpse Tendrils, then Corpse Explosion, and then finally use the Blood Mist that is more of a defensive skill that will help us remove CC if we ever get stuck. And then from here we repeat the same rotation and that's about it. So first of all for your skills we want to use the War Cry, Rallying Cry, Challenging Shout, Wrath of the Berserker, Iron Skin and Whirlwind. As for your gear we already discussed what stats you should look out for. But if you're looking for purely best of the best gear then here it is. So we want to get the Harlequin Crest and slot in the Damage Reduction Gem. Then for your chest get the chest armor called the Disobedience and slot in 2 Damage Reduction Gems. Then for the gloves get the Gore's Devastating Grip. Then for the pants get the Temerity and slot in 2 more damage reduction gems. Then for the boots get the Ghost Walker boots. Then for the amulet get the Melted Heart of Selig. And then lastly for your first ring get the Ring of the Echoing Fury. And then for the second one get the Bolt Chieftain's Ring. And then lastly for your weapons we wanna get the two handed hammer of the Dire Whirlwind. And sack it in 2 critical strike damage gems. Then the second weapon is the broad sword of the berserker ripping and we want to slot in one critical shag damage gem. Then for one of the last ones, equip the Remeladins magnum opus and slot in one critical shag damage gem. And then finally get the grandfather sword and slot in two same type critical shag damage gems. Then let's move forwards and this is how your skill tree should look like. If you just came from the leveling build then this is very similar. 
So again, just copy these exact same upgrades. And again, don't forget that by gathering all the renown in the game, you will get 10 extra skill points. And then finally, we have come to the Paragon system. At first, it may seem overwhelming, but if you're like me who's played the previous Diablo games, then this is quite self-explanatory. So starting off, this is how your first 26 points should be spent. Then this is how it should look like at 62 points. Then this is how it should look like around 92 points. And then lastly, this is our final goal at around 109 points. Another new major feature of Paragon board are the glyphs, which are inserted into sockets and they will provide massive bonuses that scale with your stats. You can level up your glyphs by successfully completing nightmare dungeons. And here are my top 6 favorite ones. So we have the Exploit, Wrath, Martial, Territorial, Undaunted and the Imbiber. So then in my summary, the Whirlwind Barbarian is a very straightforward build that is very fun and does massive amounts of AoE damage. So then for your gameplay loop it is very similar for both builds. We just want to start by simply spamming the Rallying Cry, War Cry and Challenging Shout when the monsters are very close to our character. Then afterwards we buff ourselves with the Wrath of the Berserker and then we start channeling the Whirlwind. Remember to attack only with your main two-handed sword because all the other weapons are only meant for extra stats. So just spin to win and have fun. So first of all for your skills we want to use the Poison Chap, Dark Shroud, Dash, Shadow Step, Shadow Clone and Twisting Blades. And as for your gear, we already discussed what stats to look out for. But if you're looking for purely for the best of the best then here it is. So we want to get the Fjord Lined Hood of the Shared Misery and suck it in Damage Reduction Gem. Then for the chest piece get the Steadfast Tunic of Disobedience and suck it in again the same gem. Then for the next one get the Mangler Steadfast Gloves. Then for your legs get the Cheat Steadfast Pants and suck it in two more damage reduction gems while controlled impaired. Then for the boots get the Ghost Walker Superior Boot. Then for the jewelry get the Blast Trapper's Amulet. Then for the first ring get the Acceleration Ring. And then for the second one get the Ring of the Umbral. And then lastly for the weapons get the Blade Dancer's Warcaster. And suck it in the critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. Then for the next weapon get a Smithing Gladius Sword. And suck it in the same gem. And then lastly get the Edge Master's Short Sword. And suck it in one more critical strike damage gem. Then moving forwards. And this is how your skill tree should look like. If you just came from the leveling build then this is very similar. So again just copy these exact upgrades. And don't forget that by gathering all the renown in the game you will get 10 extra skill points. And then finally we have the Paragon system. At first it may seem overwhelming but if you're like me who played the previous Diablo games then this is quite self explanatory. So starting off this is how your first 26 points should be spent. Then this is how it should look like at 62 points and then this is how it should look like at around 92 points. And then lastly this is our final goal at around 109 points. Another new major feature of Paragon board are the glyphs which are inserted into sockets and they will provide massive bonuses that scale with your stats. You can level up your glyphs by successfully completing nightmare dungeons. And here are my top 6 best ones. So we select the exploit, combat, diminish, turf, closer and control. So then in my final summary, the Twisting Blades Rogue is super fun and mobile assassin build that can speedrun through any world tier content. While quite difficult to learn, it is a build that feels very rewarding. For gameplay loop I recommend to invest into energy recovery as much as possible so you can spam the Twisting Blades. Then when you're fighting monsters always before using the blades, first of all attack few times the enemy with the basic attack and only then start running around the enemies while using the twisted blades. Then as well use your evade, dash and shadow step to reposition while in combat or when moving from zone to zone. 